This is a GCSE video about motion. Motion is the study of things moving. And when we're talking about things moving, we need to know about three different things. First of all, we need to know how far something has moved. And we call that the distance. Then we need to know how long it took. Call that the time. And then we need to know how fast it's going, and we call that the speed. Now these three quantities are related very closely, and we can calculate the speed using the equation speed equals distance divided by time. Now, it's very important that we don't start using unusual measurements for all these things. So we always measure distance in metres, we always measure time in seconds, and we always measure speed in metres per second. Now, we can see this quite easily if we have a vehicle like this, which travels 10 metres. If it travels the 10 metres in two seconds, then the time is two seconds. And so the speed is 10 divided by two, which is five meters per second. Now there's another word that we sometimes use, or you might hear, and that word is velocity. Velocity and speed are very similar, but there's one important difference. Velocity has a direction, and speed has no direction. So if we get our vehicle back, and we say that it is moving at 5 metres per second this way, and then it stops. Its velocity was five meters per second and its speed was five meters per second. But now it starts going backwards at the same speed. Its speed is still five meters per second. Direction does not matter, but its velocity is now minus five meters per second because velocity has a direction and that direction is that way in this case. So when the car is going that way, velocity is minus, it's negative. So velocity has a direction and speed has no direction. A very useful way of representing motion, representing things moving, is to put it on a graph. Now there are two types of graph. The first, the first one that we're going to talk about is a distance time graph. Now, the distance time graph talks about how far something has travelled in how long. So if we have a journey that looks something like this, then here we know that in the first section, let's call it A, someone has traveled 20 meters in three seconds. So if we wanted to, we could work out his speed, but we know that he's traveled 20 meters in three seconds. In section B, he's gone from 20 meters away from where he started to 20 meters away from where he started. So he's not moving at all here. In C, he's taken two seconds to go 20 meters from seven to nine. So he's taken two seconds to go 20 meters. So he's moving faster than he did at A. So this is fast and this is slow. So you can see important things from this graph. If it's a horizontal line, that person's not moving. If the gradient is shallow like this, he's moving slow. And if it's a steeper gradient, then he's moving fast. And as we said before, if you wanted to calculate the speed, we could do 20, the distance that he's traveled, 
divided by three. So the speed or the velocity is 20 divided by three um, here, which is 6.67. Meters per second. Here he's not moving, so the speed is zero meters per second. And here he's moving fast. He's in two seconds, he's traveled 20 meters. So the speed is 20 divided by two, which is 10 meters per second. So you can see that here he's only going 6.67 meters per second, and here he's going 10. So the more steep the gradient, the faster he is traveling. Here we have a second type of graph to describe motion. This one is a velocity time graph or a speed time graph. Now we can take a similar journey and we can look at what's happening. So here, this person is going from zero meters per second to two meters per second, and it takes him three seconds. Now we know from, from before that if you're changing speed, you're accelerating. So this person here is accelerating. Here, from three to five seconds, He's going two meters per second here and two meters per second here, so he's not accelerating, but he'll also he's not stopped. He's moving two meters per second. So here he's moving at a constant speed. Here, he is going in two seconds, he's going from two meters per second to four meters per second. So here he's accelerating more. If we wanted to then come to the end of the journey, we could go all the way down here like this. And he is going from four meters per second to zero meters per second in one second. So because he's going from four to zero, we know he's slowing down, so he's decelerating. Now, you can calculate the acceleration because we know acceleration is change in velocity divided by time. So here in this section, the change in velocity is two and the time taken for that change is three. So here the acceleration is two divided by three meters per second squared. Here, constant speed, so the acceleration is zero. Here, he's accelerating more. He's going two meters per second is the change in velocity, and two seconds is the amount of time that it takes. So here, the acceleration is two over two meters per second squared. And here, he's going from four to zero, so the change in velocity is minus four, divided by the time it took, which is one meters per second squared. So here you can see the acceleration is negative because he is slowing down. So now we'll take our little car on a journey. So here he is, he's stopped to begin with, his velocity is zero. Then he's gonna accelerate until he gets to this patch of mud. And then he has to go very slowly through the patch of mud. And then he gets to the other side, he accelerates again and then he reaches his destination and slows down and comes to a stop. So if we draw a graph of that journey, he started off with no speed, he started off stopped and then he accelerated, but then he got to the mud and so he had to slow down again, he decelerated, he went slowly through the mud and then when he got to the other side of the mud, he accelerated again, then went at a constant speed until he reached the end where he slowed down and stopped. So this is approximately the graph of that journey. The only other thing you need to know 
is that you can calculate the distance that has been traveled from a velocity time graph. And the way that you do that is by using the area underneath the graph. So if we go back to our previous graph, this one, we know that here in this section, we accelerated from zero to two meters per second in three seconds. Now, if we take the area from that section, the area of this triangle is half the base times the height. So 1.5 times two, 1.5 times two is three. And so this person has traveled three meters during this time here. In this section here, it's an area of a simple square. So the base is two, the height is two. So the area is two times two, which is four meters. So the distance that they've traveled in the first five seconds is three meters plus four meters, which is seven meters total for the first five meters. If you wanted to carry that on here, you could do so, you could change that into a triangle and a square down here and then another triangle and you could calculate the area under the graph for the whole journey and that would tell you the distance in meters for the whole journey. So on a velocity time graph the gradient is the acceleration, the area under the graph is the distance traveled and on a distance time graph the gradient is the speed or the velocity and the area under the graph doesn't mean anything, you don't need to worry about that.